Want to talk about AT&T for a moment, posting a mixed quarter earlier this morning. Earnings beating by a penny, but revenue uh, a bit shy. The company had pushed back its report because of negotiations with Elliott Management. And you're going to look at that stock uh, up, though, this morning because of a little bit of what they said in terms of forecasting and because of the support they're now getting from Elliott. Elliott disclosing a stake in the company, of course, back in September. Uh, joining us right now to talk about the earnings report uh, and specifically I want to get to this fight with Elliot, which seems to have uh, reached a detente, at least for now. Craig Moffat is here. He's the founder and senior analyst at Moffat Nathanson. He has a neutral rating and a $31 price target on AT&T. Uh, looks like uh, the, the battle, Craig, at least uh, temporarily, has been halted. This idea they're going to uh, have some new uh, board members and uh, no more acquisitions, at least uh, for now. And we'll see what happens to Randall Stevenson doesn't sound like he's going anywhere, at least not in 2020, Craig. That's right, Andrew. And, and they also committed to share repurchases. Right. Um, which is a big one. It, it, which is a, a big one. That um, and they, the dividend as well. Yeah, that and the dividend. And look, it, the, the challenge for investors now looking at today's report is, um, is going to be how believable is this guidance? Because um, they're, they're saying they're going to grow revenues 1% to 2% a year. They're going to expand margins by 200 basis points by 2022. Um, and yet, against that, revenues are currently shrinking in, at, at the consolidated level. They're about flat in wireless. They're shrinking and margins are shrinking in the entertainment group, they're flat and shrinking in, uh, or uh, margins are shrinking and revenues are shrinking in the business services group. Warner Media is down 4.4 percent. So every part of this business is shrinking and getting worse, and yet the guidance says, "Don't worry, it's about to get better." And so you're you're not believing it, is what you're basically trying to say in a polite way. Um, I, I think it, it's hard to see exactly how they get there. Look, telecom companies are, are at the end of the day, high fixed cost I industries, right? They're, they have largely fixed costs. And so if revenues go down, the only way to keep margins from also going down is to radically cut costs. Now, at and is a reasonably good cost cutter. And a lot of what Elliot has said is that you have to get better at being a cost cutter. And that's a lot of what's in this um, operating plan, presumably. The margin expansion comes mostly from cost cuts. Um, but it's really, uh, it, take the entertainment group, which is their second largest um, part of the business behind, uh, behind wireless. The entertainment group is, is now, the subscriber base of premium video, mostly direct TV, is now shrinking at more than 10% a year. And in the quarter, it's down 5.3% just in the last three months. So it annualizes to something like a 20% decline. It really stretches credibility to say that, don't worry, next year we're still going to be with 20% fewer subscribers. We're going to be fine, and we'll be able to keep flat EBITDA. The, the business services group, which is a huge group, almost as large as, as the whole Warner Media complex, um, is seeing EBITDA right now shrinking at more than 7% a year. And... And that is a secularly challenged business. It's not that at and is not running it well. It's that there are serious headwinds to business services as that industry gets um, commoditized. And so you're seeing price compression for all the incumbents. Um, it, you're going to fight against a lot of secular trends in order to hit these kinds of numbers. And I think what the market's going to be grappling with is how feasible is that? Hey, Craig, your price target is $31. Is that correct? That's right. The stock is now 20 percent plus past that. Are you reconsidering that, or is there a point where you say, "Okay, forget it, throw in the towel"? Well, so what we said in our last report is um, is that it was called um, Tina loves telecom, meaning there is no alternative right now in a world of global yield starvation, and so AT and T. Um, stock will continue to attract capital simply because the dividend is so high until it becomes clear that the dividend needs to be cut. Um, and this, the, the guidance is very positive, but I, I don't think it's going to put to rest. And, and look, and let me be clear, they've also done a very good job in asset monetizations and what have you in paying down some debt. But the, but the secular challenges for all of these businesses are bad and getting worse. And so eventually the debate about how sustainable is the dividend will come back um, uh, un until they can show that there is some way that they can, 
that can actually sustainably find a way not just to grow the overall business, but to grow any of these businesses individually. So, Craig, the, the, the piece of this that I'm, I'm curious about is, are you surprised then that you're hearing support from Elliott, which came out very aggressively against the company, but now seems to support it? Or do you think that this is just uh, a wait and see situation? Well, what, what Elliott said in their original letter, Andrew, was what, this was not a, a breakup story. In fact, one of the curious things about, um, about AT&T, at least by our numbers, was that the sum of the parts actually yielded a lower share price than where the stock was trading. Again, that was sort of emblematic of the fact that the dividend was supporting the stock in a way that sort of fundamentals wouldn't have. Um, so this wasn't about just break up the company and sell off some pieces um, because it, as a sum of the parts story would often be in, a, in an activist letter. What Elliott asked AT&T to do was mostly around cost reduction and governance um, and, and uh, capital allocation. Um, AT&T has committed to doing exactly those things. So um, while I guess it remains to be seen how efficacious those things turn out to be in, in the face of, you know, you can't cut your way to greatness, as they say, you, whether they can cut enough costs that it, that it actually makes these businesses turn around um, is, to me, a, a, a difficult proposition. But they are essentially executing um, on what Elliot asked them to do. So, no, I don't think it's terribly surprising that Elliot is supportive of, of the trajectory.